What a great day today to be in church celebrating our freedom, party, have fun. It's been happening for over 200 years. The United States of America lighting off fireworks, singing, dancing. The first Fourth of July celebration was July 4th, 1776, when the Declaration of Independence was read, established by 13 states, and on we went to becoming our own nation, a free country, and actually the birth of a whole new idea of how people could live. That American dream is still changing our world today. Because of America, the whole world knows how people can live, what freedom means, and that it's available. Think of that first sentence in the Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776. What if you were hearing it for the first time? We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, it flows with what Jesus said, that he came to set captives free, and he came to bring abundant life, and he left his joy with us. These same words that are in our Declaration of Independence were given to us by Jesus 2,000 years ago. So we're celebrating over 200 years of a nation, which is a very small part of human history. But over 2,000 years, Jesus offered this freedom to all mankind. There's an amazing thing about freedom. You can set a person free, but you can't make them free. You get what I mean, right? You can set a person free. You can open the gate. You can take off the chains. You, you, you can offer an opportunity, but you can't make them be free because no matter what, we humans make our own choices. Reminded of a story of a good friend who came from one of the Eastern Bloc countries. He had lived under the rule of communism and the USSR, and he was taught that religion was the opiate of the people, and it was bad, and he, and he grew up in that controlled environment. But for some reason, he wanted freedom. And then as a young man, he started finding a way. He started making contacts. He started making a plan, and he escaped out of the USSR, and into Canada and from Canada into America. And over 20 years ago, he found himself in a brand new country and free to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. But he tells the story that on his first days here in America, he just was getting drunk. He was partying. He was using drugs. He was so happy to be here, and yet he would wake up hungover and strung out and wasting away. And it wasn't long after he was in America that first year when he realized, I'm in the land of the free, the home of the brave, but am I free? And that started him on another quest. His first quest to get out a political bondage, economic bondage, his second quest to find something more than that natural freedom. And well, of course, God was at work in his life and he met a Christian and the Christian talked to him about Jesus and he got born again. Years later, I met him as he led a worship team. They actually ministered around America, accomplished some great things. This weekend, I was with one of the pastors that I met through him from Bulgaria, lifelong friends of our church, and many great things have happened because of that relationship. But it all started when he was hungry for freedom, and he realized it was more than politics. It was more than government. It was more than economics. It was a spiritual thing. It was a soul thing. It was a heart thing. And only Jesus can bring that kind of freedom. His story is probably like many of yours, 
and many that we know around our world who are looking for a natural freedom, but then at one point find there's more to it. It has to come out of your spirit, out of your heart, out of your soul. And that's the freedom that really matters in life. What a sad thing for so many to live in freedom but be in bondage. Have the chains removed, the doors open, the opportunity there, but still bound in their struggles and their troubles and their own thinking. Today, I'm going to call this lesson Free for Real. Right? Free for real. Not just free politically, not just free because of some statement that's been read by the government or a law that's been made, but free for real. In John chapter 8, starting at verse 31, Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we're Abraham's descendants, have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is the slave to sin. A slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Free indeed. Free for real. Free from the inside out. What an amazing thing Jesus is offering them. And of course, the religious mind was arguing, right? The religious mind was saying, well, I've never been in bondage. I've never been in bondage to any man. Which was a crazy thing to say because the Jews were in bondage to the Romans right then controlled by and managed by the Roman Empire at that very moment. How could they say we've never been in bondage? It's, it's an amazing thing that people often deny their own bondage, isn't it? People will often act like, I'm great, everything's good, I'm happy, life is good. In fact, they're in more than one kind of bondage, and so it was with these who were following and listening to Jesus at that time, they said, we've never been in bondage. How can we be made free? Maybe the first step to freedom is admitting you're in bondage. Maybe the first steps to real freedom is realizing I'm not free. And Jesus said, if you'll abide in my word, you'll be my di disciple and you'll know the truth and that Truth will make you free. Spirit, soul, body, family, finance, health. In every way, that truth will make you free. And if the sun makes you free, not if a government makes you free, not if a law makes you free, but if the Son of God makes you free, you shall be free for real. You shall be free indeed. So many today are free but not free, right? It's like the song, sorry but not sorry. Yeah, they're free but not free. They live in freedom, but they're living in bondage. We are politically, legally, because of Jesus, spiritually free, but yet we stay captive to so many things. It seems our society, our culture, our lifestyles show us that bondage every day. Maybe it's thoughts of sadness and despair that control and limit and hold some back. Thinking that is negative, that is dark, that is down. Holding us back from relationships, from creativity, from opportunity. Maybe it's those negative thoughts that you struggle with, anxieties and fears of the mind. Some struggle with addictions of various kind, the alcohol addiction, the drug addiction, the sexual addiction, the pornography addiction, 
food disorders. We, we kind of create addictions, don't we? We kind of come up with new ones and get out of sorts and out of balance and controlled by some strange things. The human flesh will turn itself over to strange things, tobacco addictions and chewing addictions. And wow, we just keep creating more and more addictions because the flesh will always lead us to bondage. And without Christ, we will always find a way to put ourselves in captivity. The saddest ones are the captivity to alcohol and drugs and the destruction that it brings to families and the accidents that they bring on our freeways and the tragedy that drugs brings to our society. We see it in our own city, free Adel, right? In free Adel, we see the results of allowing that addictive lifestyle to, in a sense, be celebrated, be accepted, be made okay, and now our streets are full of the pain and the problems that come because people are bound to their addictions. Some of us are bound to our fears, fears that hold us back from abundant life. We, we had dreams as kids, but life is hard and we got scared and we dropped out of school. We never really went for it. We got afraid that we couldn't do it and so we gave up along the way. 365 fear knots in the Bible, one for every day of the year, and yet many of us still let fear hold us back. We're afraid to drive. We're afraid to try. We're afraid to come out of the house. We're afraid to start that new job. We're afraid to make a commitment. We're afraid to be all in with God. Fear holds so many of us back. The fear is not freedom. Those who are silently, maybe, quietly, hidden away, bound to their fears, are not free. A big thing in our culture today is anger. Yeah, unforgiveness, negative emotions, prejudices, tweeting out about people, FaceTiming about people, finding a way to bring them down. We're going to bring them down. It's a phenomenon in our culture, anger, unforgiveness. How can I hurt others? How can I condemn others? How can I spread negative emotion? It's an amazing thing to me. I, I don't understand why we'd want to pass on that anger. Maybe we think just spreading it around is going to somehow make us better. The fact is it just makes everybody worse. And we see it politically. We see it socially. We see it racially. We see it in so many ways, that bondage to anger, that bondage to hurt someone, that anxiety of unforgiveness. The tragedy is Jesus said, if you don't forgive, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. And so it cuts off our relationship with God. We think we're getting even. We think we're on a cause. We think we're being social warriors. In fact, we're just cut off from God and struggling in our own bondage, bound to our own angers. Really, people are designed to serve someone. We were obviously created to serve God, to have a relationship with God. And you're going to serve someone, right? Even Bob Dylan knew that. You're going to serve someone. The point is, choose wisely who you will serve. In other words, you're going to get in bondage I'm using that term lightly, to somebody. You're going to get wrapped up in something. You're going to get committed to something. If it's drugs, if it's anger, if it's fear, well, that's no fun. That's not good. But what if you got caught up, as the Apostle Paul said, addicted to the fellowship of the saints? What if you became a slave to the Lord, right? The Apostle also said he was a slave to God. A slave to no man and no thing but a slave to God. What if that became our addiction, our walk with God, our love for God, love for people as we love ourselves? So you're going to be a slave. Let's look at it in that way. You're going to be a slave. Now choose who you're going to be a slave to. Slave to the Lord, 
slave to goodness, slave to love, slave to fellowship, slave to serving. Yeah, that's a good thing. Romans chapter 6 and verse 18, the apostle says, having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. We're going to serve somebody. We're going to get enslaved to something. Let's get enslaved to the right thing. Just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and lawlessness, which leads to more lawlessness. So now present your members of slaves of righteousness for holiness. I like that idea. I'm going to be a slave somewhere. I'm going to choose my slavery wisely. I think the best slave master, master and task master has got to be God. I'm just going to serve him. I'm going to live for him. I'm going to give myself to him. Paul said, you used to give yourself to the bar. You gave yourself to the boyfriend. You gave yourself to the drugs. You gave yourself to the world. Why not give yourself to the Lord? And you'll find a whole new, higher, better level of life. Enslaved to negative people and negative philosophies, many are bound in negative lives. Enslaved to your own selfish ambitions or desires, and you'll end up bound up in that negativity. But serving God and loving Him with all of your heart will bring you into a liberty. So choose your master wisely. Choose the Lord. Be, a, as the apostle said, a bond servant of him. For the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made us free from the law of sin and death. This life that God has called us to is better, bigger, happier, stronger than anything this world has to offer. Let's never forget it. Let's not take it for granted. And when we are celebrating the 4th of July, we're waving our sparklers, right? Where we're shouting our freedoms. We're overeating at our picnic because we are free to have another hot dog. Let's make sure that we remember the point. Because of these rights that our Creator gave us, our own founding fathers knew it. They wrote it. They said it. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created. There's his Creator. Equal. They're endowed by that Creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Today at Christian Faith, we're celebrating you are free to be happy. If you'll present yourself to Jesus, if you'll put your faith in him, if you will make this thing real, not once a month, not twice a year, not once in a while, but your life committed to him, you're going to find that happiness. You're going to find that liberty. You're going to find that abundant life that all people are looking for. I want to pray with you today. I want to add my faith to yours. I, I hope this service is more than just Harleys and sparklers, right? More than just flags and lights. I hope it's something that impacts your life, brings change, brings healing, brings renewal to your life. Let's pray together. Let this be the beginning of something new, of some new freedom, of some new liberty for you. Maybe you would say, Casey, I, I am looking for something more. I, I realize it's not just America. It's not just economic or political. It's it's not natural. I realize I've, I need something on the inside. I want something more in my walk with God. W would you say that today? I, I'm looking for something more in my relationship with God. If that's you, just lift up a hand real quick. I, I'm going to pray with you. I want to 
add my faith to yours. I won't ask you to stand. I won't ask you to come forward. I just, just want to make sure you pray with us today. If I'm talking to you, let me see your hand just for a moment. Just wave it up. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can put them down. I know there's more. People are a little cautious, but it's okay. I, I think there's many who want something new with God. Let's pray this prayer together. Congregation, say it with us. Be their support. Be their prayer partner. Let's say it out loud. Today, Father, I believe Jesus is Lord. I believe he rose from the dead. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I'm going to serve you, Lord, from this day on. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap right there. Thank the Father. Thank the Lord. Let's believe God is starting new liberty in many lives today. And I want you to check in at our prayer booths because we have a free book for you called The Journey. We have a Bible for you. We have people who would love to talk with you and pray with you more if you want it. We are all about you finding that life, liberty, and happiness.